podcast is brought to you by LMU Munich. So thank you very much for the invitation to present here the latest uh, LHC results. I must admit I'm a little bit intimidated to be the only experimentalist among all the, the string theorists here, but I'll try to um, briefly present the latest status of our LHC program concentrating on the ATLAS and CMS results. And before I start dwelling on the results, um, I would first like to mention that all of the measurements and uh, results I will show, um, we were able to achieve due to the excellent performance of the LHC machine. So we have started taking data in 2010. We have coll collected a fairly low amount of data at 7 TV center of mass energy and then last year we went uh, up to five inverse femtobarn of data at the same center of mass energy. While this year, already within the two months, we have collected more data than we collected the whole last year. And we ramped up to the higher ATV center of mass energy, allowing for uh, more sensitive studies. Um, our detectors have also been performing very well. We have been able to analyze 90% of all these uh, collected data. But it is important to mention that um, this uh, exponential increase in luminosity comes at the cost of very difficult uh, detector environment, and which is difficult to, to perform our analysis. Namely, we have in our proton collision of proton bunches, for each uh, hard collision we have at the moment about 20 or more additional interactions, which create a, a, a mess in our detector, basically a pileup environment, where we have to reconstruct the primary vertex amount uh, many uh, more additional vertices. So it means that our analysis have to constantly be improved, and also our um, understanding of the detector perform performance has to constantly be improved. So we cannot just sit down and. Uh, uh, constantly run the same analysis, but uh, we, we have a lot of things to do. So now, uh, having said that, uh, here is the short outline of, of the physics program I will cover today. Basically, I will show that the standard model uh, is uh, still, uh, still in the uh, green area. Then I will concentrate on, on the latest news from the LHC, namely, um, the search for the key missing piece of the standard model, the, the Higgs boson. And in the end, uh, I will just shortly summarize uh, the searches beyond the standard model. So to start with the um, electroweak uh, processes, uh, we are able to measure at LHC with a, quite a good precision. Um, the cross sections for the W, a Z production, and the diboson production, as well as the uh, top quark cross sections. You see here the summary of these measured cross sections. In points are the data, and uh, the bands are the theory predictions. And uh, what one can see is that uh, that all of these measurements are uh, in a very good agreement with the theory predictions. Uh, most recently, with the new 2012 data, we have uh, again measured this inclusive WZ cross sections and diboson cross sections, and everything seems to be uh, quite consistent. One important thing here is that uh, all of these measurements are also important for, for our searches because these processes are our main background for, for the Higgs surges and searches for, for new phenomena. Also in the top quark sector, um, we, uh, this is the current status of the uh, TT bar cross-section measurements. Um, our current uncertainty in ATLAS is 7% and in CMS they have been able to uh, pull it down to 4%. And with this, with this precision, we are uh, really challenging the NNLO QCD predictions. We also have uh, similar, this is the measurement from the, based on the last year's data, and now in CMS we also have the uh, new uh, cross-section measurements for the ATV center of mass energy. In addition, uh, the single top uh, production can also be studied. Of course, the, the production here is 
uh, production cross section is lower, but we have measured it uh, in the T channel. We have an evidence for WT channel production and an upper limit on the production in the S channel. All of these measurements are still um, have an uncertainty which is uh, somewhat higher than the theoretical uncertainty, so now we, uh, so we cannot really test the theory um, with this channel. Um, the top mass is, of course, very interesting also for the uh, Higgs searches and interpretation of um, the standard model and uh, the on standard model prospects. So this is the status of uh, the top mass measurement with last year's data. Um, this is the combined uh, value from both ATLAS and CMS experiments. Uh, and our current uh, statistical plus systematic uncertainties is still um, about 30% larger than the Tevatron uncertainty due to um, our experimental uncertainties on the B-Jet energy scale and also uh, on the uh, theory uncertainties from generator dependence. However, we expect that this year uh, we will be able to uh, further improve. Now I'm switching to, um, to the main part of my talk today, namely the latest results from the Higgs searches, which were presented at CERN on the 4th of July. And this was the atmosphere just one night before this seminar um, with people um, preparing to spend the night in front of the auditorium, waiting for the seminar to start the next morning. So this is one of our former Higgs coordinator sleeping on the floor. And uh, this was the queue, seven o'clock in the morning, uh, extending, uh, I think, at least 100 meters. Um, and uh, some of the lucky people were able to enter the room and, and listen uh, and, and see the latest results. Of course, uh, the tension was high because Atlas people did not know the CMS results and vice versa. So um, it was um, exciting until the very end. And now I'm, start, I'm starting with the results. So just um, as a reminder, we are looking for the Higgs boson, uh, which is produced mainly through the gluon fusion, but also through the fusion of the two vector bosons and the two additional production modes uh, with the, uh, in association with the vector bosons and the TT bar are also being used. Um, there are several decay channels which we need to study. There is not just one single decay channel where we can look for, for the Higgs. So there is not only Higgs to gamma gamma, but for example, for the um, most interesting mass of 125 GV, we have in addition to the two photons, we have the four lepton channel, so Higgs decaying into ZZ and the both Z is decaying into two leptons. And we have the Higgs decay into two Ws, where both of them decay leptonically. So these are the three most sensitive channels, and I will concentrate today on, on these. However, um, the final results um, are a combination with also additional channels, Higgs to be bar, Higgs to tau tau, in particular in this low mass region. And then in the high mass region, we also have the decays into dibosons uh, with, in semi-leptonic uh, final states. Uh, CMS has updated BB bar and Tau Tau uh, for ATV and Atlas is, uh, is uh, still using the 2011 results in, in these two channels. So now uh, to start with uh, one of the cleanest channels, the decay uh, into the four, four leptons. So here is a night, night, nice um, display of a uh, Higgs candidate decay into four muons. These are the, the, the red lines are the tracks of the uh, four muons going all the way to the outermost side of the detector. And this is the zoom into the um, a few centimeters of the, around the collision point where we have this primary vertex with four muons and uh, additional vertices from the pileup events. Now, uh, the four lepton channel, as I said, is a very clean one because uh, there are very few background processes which can, uh, which give the similar signature. However, uh, we need, um, since we have four leptons in the final state, we need to reconstruct them with very high efficiency in order to have, to, to see uh, at least some signal. And we need to have a very good mass resolution uh, in order to 
extract the, the signal resonance. The resulting mass spectra, four lepton mass spectra are shown here for ATLAS and for CMS. We studied the full mass range up to 600 GV, or CMS even 800 GV. And uh, in general, the data agree very well with, uh, with our background expectation. However, if we zoom in into the low mass region, around 125 GV, you can see a small fluctuation or a small excess of data above the expected background here and also for CMS here. The corresponding signal significances, I will go into a bit more detail about how we extrapolate these how we extract these a bit later, but um, the typical numbers are 3.4 sigma and 3.2 sigma combining the 2011 and 2012 data. Now the next uh, on the list is the Higgs decay into two photons. This is a nice display of such a candidate event with the uh, two photons here nicely seen, one in the forward and one in the central region of the detector. Um, this channel is also has a very simple selection. You just need the two photons. However, the backgrounds are huge. So our backgrounds from uh, direct dye photon production is about 1,000 times higher. But in addition to that, there are also irreducible, so-called irreducible background processes where, where a, a jet can be misidentified as a photon. And these are 10 to the 6th or 10 to the 9th uh, times higher than, than the signal. So we really need a good uh, separation between the photons and jets so, uh, in order to, to extract really the true dye photon events. And uh, this uh, separation is uh, something like one in 200,000 uh, jets can, is allowed to be reconstructed as a photon. We are sure that we can really achieve this separation um, because we measure the composition of our um, diphoton selected sample. So this is shown here. In red is, so this is the invariant diphoton mass spectrum. In red is the contribution from the dijet events. In green, uh, gamma jet, photon jet events. And blue are uh, the true diphoton events. And uh, you see that at, uh, 70 to 80 percent of all events are really the true diaphragm. So we are sure that we can see the signal that it is not hidden among the um, irreducible background. The resulting um, invariant mass resolution is shown down here uh, is fitted. So uh, our background uh, estimate is extracted directly by fitting uh, to this mass spectrum and looking for the bumps. And you see from, uh, from this fit that we see a small bump around 126.5 GV in ATLAS with a significance of 4.5 sigma. And in CMS, significance 4.1 sigma at 125 GV. Um, these uh, spe inclusive spectra are not really the ones uh, out of which we extract the signal significance. We divide our uh, events into s uh, several categories because, for example, we have a better photon resolution, uh, energy resolution in the central that part of the detector than in the, compared to the forward one. So we can gain a little bit in the significance by separating into several categories. The last uh, channel I will cover here is the uh, Higgs decay into two W bosons where both of them decays leptonically. So here is one example where one of the W's decays into a muon uh, plus neutrino and the, one, uh, the second one into electron plus neutrino. And the two neutrinos here are seen as a, just one vector of the missing transverse energy. And that is one reason, even though this channel is the most sensitive one, it has the uh, highest branching ratio in, in a wide mass range. Um, even though um, we have the most sensitive channel, it is still uh, very difficult to reconstruct this final state because we have two neutrinos, so we can ma not measure the, the invariant mass directly. Um, we rather rely on the transverse mass, which is a combination of the missing transverse energy and the visible decay products. 
So in, uh, that means that we have a very broad uh, mass distribution and our background also have a very broad mass distribution so we need to understand our backgrounds very well and a big challenge of the analysis is to define control regions in the data samples which are signal free and uh, enhanced in different backgrounds so that we, that we can understand these backgrounds very well. But in the end uh, we are able to do this quite good and this is the resulting transverse mass spectra after all uh, selection criteria in CMS. Um, this is now only the 2012 data uh, shown and you can see that there is a small axis of of uh, data above the expected background. The signal, the expected signal is shown here in red. Um, and, but uh, combining the 2011-2012 data, um, the significance of this axis is rather low, below two sigma. In ATLAS, this is actually the uh, very fresh result, um, only one week old. It was not shown in iChip. Uh, this is the latest result uh, for the Atlas WW analysis uh, at HTV and you can see that we have a bit higher access here um, compared to the expected background and our signal uh, we have stacked here um, expected signal for 125 GV Higgs. You see that we are still a little bit above. And um, the uh, signal significance of this axis when we combine both data sets together is on the order of 2.8 sigma. Now I am switching to the combined results. So this is the overall uh, picture of the uh, exclusion limits um, on the Higgs cross section compared to the standard model uh, prediction which is uh, indicated by the line at one here. Everything below this line is excluded. Um, in both Atlas and CMS, we exclude uh, the full range uh, up to 600 GeV, except from this uh, axis, which is observed here in both experiments around 125 GeV. So now, if we have a closer look into this region of axis, we can uh, uh, ask the question, what is the probability that the background fluctuation would create such an axis of events. And the smaller the probability, the higher the signal significance, of course. The probability is shown here. This is the black line uh, here at 126 GV in Atlas. It reaches the minimum uh, slightly a bit, uh, uh, slightly above five sigma. Um, this should be compared with the dashed line, uh, which is what the value we would expect from if, if there would be a Higgs boson at a particular mass. So if we look at 126, this expected significance would be uh, 4.6 sigma. Similar situation in CMS. This is the uh, observed p-value, uh, which corresponds to s uh, a bit less than 5 sigma, while the expected should be a bit uh, higher, is a bit higher because uh, they have included the Higgs to BB bar and Higgs to tau tau channel, so they have a higher sensitivity. To summarize uh, this plot, uh, we observe in both uh, experiments a significance of around five sigma, which corresponds to a discovery of a new resonance. It is also interesting uh, to see what is the behavior of uh, the data in 2011 and 2012 separately, and we see very similar uh, results. So the red and blue curves on both plots show the 2011 and 2012 data separately and we see very similar um, trend. And it is also interesting that if we extend this plot uh, up to 600 GV, we will uh, nowhere else see any fluctuation in a combined um, curve which is above one sigma. So everything is flat except this 125 GV. Uh, also interesting is to see how much uh, separate individual channels are contributing and uh, this you can see maybe more, more clearly on the CMS plot. The, the dominant uh, contribution comes from the uh, gamma gamma channel. The next one is the four lepton and the WW which uh, <coughs> contributes very, um, uh, not so much and uh, the tau tau and BB bar with a very 
uh, negligible contribution. Uh, in Atlas, the situation is similar. Um, however, here the WW channel is not yet um, included. And uh, of course, uh, one asks the question how compatible this uh, observation is with the standard model. And the first quantity that one wants to look at is what is the strength of the signal we observe and how well does it compare to the standard model. So this is shown here and you have seen this plot uh, many times, I suppose. Um, so we see that uh, the signal strength is zero everywhere except around 125 GeV in both experiments. The maximum value in Atlas is at 126.5 and it is 1.2 plus minus plus minus 0.3 and uh, in CMS 0 0.8 plus minus 0 0.22. So within these um, error bars, uh, everything is still consistent with the standard model, but of course the error bars are um, quite large still. And uh, this is not the whole story. This is just uh, assuming that uh, um, all um, couplings to all, all other, all, all the K channels have the same uh, relative uh, contribution as predicted by the standard model and then we just scale them up and down by a certain number. So the full story will be to measure each channel separately and see um, what are the separate contributions. So to conclude this part of my talk, this was the atmosphere after the seminar. And these are the two spokespersons, Atlas and CMS, looking quite happy. This was the audience looking also very happy. And this was one of the fathers of the Higgs mechanism, Peter Higgs. And he was shedding tears uh, because it was a very moving moment. We have discovered a new particle with a mass around 125 GeV. The particle is so far consistent with the standard model Higgs boson. However, uh, the property measurements still have a very large uncertainty and it will need much more data to really determine whether this is how consistent this is with the standard model and whether this is really the Higgs boson. Now, in the last, uh, the next two minutes, which are three minutes I have, I will just briefly go over the latest uh, searches beyond the standard model. This is, for example, the uh, micro summary of the supersymmetric searches in many, many channels. Um, there are inclusive searches in different final states, searches for third generation quarks, um, long lived particles, and so on. What one can take from this picture is that we are reaching the, excluding the mass scales up to one TeV. And a similar picture, you have seen an um, embarrassing picture, as the speaker before me said, uh, from Atlas about uh, uh, the exclusion of the parameter space quark and gluino masses. This is a similar picture from CMS in the C CMSSM scenario. Um, what one can see from, uh, from this plot is that the squarks and gluinos with masses up to 1.3 TeV are excluded uh, here at 95% uh, confidence level. But however, one should also mention that this is under the assumption that all uh, squark generations are uh, degenerated mass. So if we look for the third generation um, top squarks um, directly, there is still some space left uh, for, for the SUSE to live in. You can uh, check in the uh, backup if you're interested afterwards uh, the latest results with 2012 data on some of the um, analysis, but the general picture does not change very much. Now, the um, search for more exotic um, scenarios is summarized here for Atlas. For example, we are looking for extra dimensions for uh, laptop quarks, excited quarks, um, um, contact interaction, and so, and so on. And here um, we are excluding the scales from one up to four TV. So the general exclusion ranges here between two and four TV. Similar situation also in CMS. This is uh, an example of exclusion for some of the resonances like uh, Z prime or uh, gravitons um, or some uh, string expired 
uh, in, in string in, inspired resonances and as well uh, the limits on the black hole. So uh, you can offline, you can uh, pick your favorite model and check what is the latest status. Um, maybe I still have time to show just uh, a few examples with the latest ATV results from some of these searches. This is, for example, the latest uh, result from the black hole search uh, at CMS at, with ATV data, which allow for the much higher sensitivity that we had uh, compared to the 7TV data. We are looking simply for the uh, signature with large total transverse energy, uh, which comes from multiple uh, energetic jets and then in addition also leptons and photons and so on. So this is a typical event display with 10 uh, jets in the event and additional uh, electrons. Uh, a typical spectrum of such a transverse energy is shown here. This is, uh, these are the observed data and this is uh, what we would expect from um, microscopic uh, black holes at a particular model. And these are the observed exclusion limits on the uh, cross section of the black hole production independence on the black hole uh, mass. And if we compare them with a theoretical prediction, we can then exclude uh, a particular mass value, for example, um, 4 to 6 TV, depending on, on the um, parameters of the ADD model, for example, uh, on the, depending on the number of extra dimensions and uh, multidimensional Planck scale value. Now, uh, um, there is also a very nice final state with the digits where we can look for the resonances. Here is an example of a um, highest mass uh, digit event in Atlas with the digit mass of 4 TV. These are the two uh, very high energetic um, jets. This is the invariant mass spectrum of the two jets uh, measured in CMS and similarly in Atlas compared with what we would expect, for example, from a uh, w prime from the sequential standard model, one more minute, and uh, uh, from, from, the, from some other models. The corresponding uh, exclusion limits are given uh, in a model independent way. So we basically uh, present the limits on the cross section for any resonance in the digit spectrum. And we can compare with our favorite model, for example, Atlas compares with the uh, uh, the model for exci excited quarks and CMS compares now with uh, several models like uh, Randall Sandrum Graviton which uh, with masses excluded up to uh, 1.4 TV or the string resonance is excluded up to 4.7 TV. Again, you can choose your favorite model or you don't even have to look for the models we have chosen but you can just uh, take your model and compare with our limits. Um, we can also look for the leptonic final states. For example, in the dilepton uh, final state, we look for the resonances and exclude the standard model like a Z prime uh, up to 2.6 TV and also super string inspired Z prime up to the similar scale. Um, we also look for the W prime resonances in, in the lepton plus neutrino final state where we uh, uh, here exclude uh, again the standard model like W prime up to 3 TV. Uh, we were also looking for the um, Kaluza Klein ex um, excitations of the W boson and these can be excluded up to 3 TV. This is a, based on these uh, exclusion one can also put the limits on, on the, uh, this parameter space of the universal extra dimensions uh, and you see here for example the comparison what we have in 7 TV data in yellow and in black uh, extension to 8 TV. I will uh, skip this. These are also some searches in Atlas for TT bar resonances or extra dimensions in monojets plus missing energy events. And this brings me to my summary which is that uh, Thanks to the very uh, really outstanding performance of our 
LHC machine, we have been able to perform a very rich program, uh, physics program, and um, so far all the measurements indicate that the standard model uh, is in good agreement with theory predictions. There is a, still uh, no sign of any new physics beyond the standard model, but it's not yet uh, excluded, there, therefore I put it in a gray area, there is still some space left for the signal. And the latest news is that we have discovered a new resonance with a mass around uh, 125 GeV, which is consistent with the standard model Higgs boson, but much more data will be needed. And I believe uh, this opens a new era of uh, theory discussions and uh, uh, discussions of, of um, implications of this discovery, as we just heard in the previous talk. Thank you very much. Everything clear. <laughs> um, can you tell us something about the ultimate um, ability to um, evaluate the Higgs boson properties compared to the standard model? How well will we do it comparing the Higgs boson to the standard model? Um, you mean after we have collected all the data? <laughs> yeah, I, I'm not sure um, what will be the final answer. I'm sure that uh, we will be able to <coughs> measure the couplings, but I'm not sure what will be the, the ultimate uh, uncertainty. At the moment, um, the fermion couplings are very uncertain, 100% uncertainty. The, if we assume that uh, all uh, um, couplings to the boson scale with the same strength, then we have something like 50% uncertainty at the moment. I assume that we will get down at least to 10%, but I'm not sure if we can get, and these studies still have need, need, need to be done. How, what is the sensitivity with, with the full luminosity? Sorry. So this is a, maybe interesting to show is a, um, what is the, the current status of the coupling measurements. Yeah. So what is, this is what we have today. If we assume that the all fermion coupling scale with the same strength and the all back to boson couplings with the same strength, then uh, this is our mean value here compared to the standard model which is here. And you see that the uncertainty is quite large still. So. 